Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, we're going to be talking about why Wacom, the king of digital styluses, has been helping this group to create a stylus that will eventually overtake them. Why they do this? What is special about USI 2.0 standard, these brand new styluses that makes them the ideal option for artists? Keep watching to learn what this cheap stylus can do that none of the other styluses that we use can do. It's a really cool feature. All right, let's go ahead and start the interview now. Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro, and I'm here with Pete Mueller. Pete is the president of the USI uh, protocol, or how would you uh, label that, USI? Uh, it's a consortium standards body, yeah. That's, I'm glad you explained <laughs> what it's called. <laughs> All right, say it one more time. Uh, what? Uh, it's the USI consortium. It's a consortium, basically a standards body. We we set out to develop an industry standard specification around stylus protocol. Yeah. Okay, like the uh, NFC and Bluetooth. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. 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 So um, Pete and I had a conversation last week, and we were talking about uh, a whole bunch of different things uh, regarding the brand new USI 2.0. Uh, protocol, which is here in this stylus. Uh, this one is made by Lenovo. And so Pete and I were talking about what is new, uh, why is this better, what things are being added, and actually it was a lot of really cool, exciting features that made me uh, embarrassingly giddy. So uh, Pete, can you talk about uh, two or three of the, the new features that are in the 2.0 stylus? Sure. Yeah, I think um... And probably the biggest change to the specification from the 1.0 um, is the support for you know different incel panels. So I think we talked a little bit about insect incel technology and how that differs from some of the other touch technologies uh, that exist on on the different platforms, whether it be a tablet or a two on one. Uh, so that one is just fundamentally a change in timing. It's something that's more or less invisible to the user, so maybe not super exciting to them but but it, but it was important for the the tier yeah we'll talk about the exciting stuff in a minute uh, but it was exciting for the customers uh, a lot of them were looking at moving towards incel technology for their displays uh, just because it it represents a potential cost reduction and and uh, you know better performance uh, the other one was wireless charging so that one was also a key OEM request so uh, you know we, we try to listen to our, our OEMs and, and by the way I mean those folks are all uh, you know, members of USI. So when I say those folks, I'm talking about Dell, Lenovo, uh, HP, Acer, Asus, Samsung. So pretty much all the, you know, the, the the tier one OEMs that are developing, you know, different Chromebook products are members. So so they provided feedback. That was a very strong request to support wireless charging. So the idea there is, uh, I mean, I think you've seen that before. Uh, you just right. hang the, hang the stylus on the side of the screen and. And uh, it'll charge wirelessly, which is great because all the, the previous products on 1.0 were either, you know, rechargeable batteries or they were, uh, you know, quad A kind of batteries. Yeah. And so I, I think there was a strong request for that. Um, we did also add the tilt functionality. So that one, mm -hmm. we rolled it into the 2.0 spec. I think most people are considering a 2.0 feature, but it actually uh, kind of pre-existed the 2.0 spec. Uh, we, we developed it shortly after the, the 1.0, but but since most folks had already had ASICs and, and their silicon out, um, most kind of deferred that functionality to 2.0, which is why you're seeing most of the 2.0 styluses will will have uh, tilt functionality. So that's been that's been added. Uh, we did expand the color support, and and to talk about that, I kind of need to go back to 1.0, which is some of the cool features that we we already mm -hmm. had. Um, but interestingly, though, even though we've been out for a while, the initial focus was obviously on just getting styluses in the market. Uh, very strong focus on cost reduction, as we talked last time. Uh, if you yeah, look at like an Apple stylus or, a, you know, Microsoft, they were, you know, in the $120, $130 range, which is kind of crazy. And one mm -hmm. of our strong, strong partners in USI has been Google, um, and they were very focused on education and cost reduction. Um, so anyway, my point was is that we do have a lot of really cool features, even back to 1.0, uh, the ability to co uh, store your preferred, let's say, color, preferred uh, style, line width, et cetera. Mm -hmm. 
it, it's really cool. So you can actually just once you program that, the touch controller will will communicate with the stylus. They do get uh, stored in the stylus. So the next time you pick that thing up and use it, and even if you moved it to a different device, so you could be working on, let's say your tablet, but then you want to work on your, you know, two-on-one or whatever it happened to be, or even your phone, uh, the stylus will rem remember those parameters and then communicate those back to the touch IC. So every time you approach the screen with that stylus, there's a kind of think about, you know, USB, right? There's this uh, configuration mm -hmm. and pairing that goes on. And part of that configuration is it communicates its preferred, uh, you know, parameters, which is really cool. And so it'll just immediately start writing in whatever preferred style that you have. So, so again, those are, those are, 1.0 features, mm -hmm. but uh, because the initial focus was really just on getting the market, you know, seated with styluses and getting them out there, you know, not a lot of that has been right. implemented. And I will, I will say one other barrier, just real quick, was, um, you know, the ability to use those really requires a, an API, and that's uh, yeah, still yeah. under development. So that should be released this year. So the nice thing is, is that, you know, on Chrome at least, you will have a, an API, which makes it a lot easier for application developers to take advantage of those features. Yeah. Uh, so let's break down those different features that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, a couple of the ones that I'm really excited about, the in-cell technology actually is is really cool because it does a couple of different things. It's a thinner display like I yep. hear. So I have this tablet here from uh, Lenovo and it's a thinner display, which means that the parallax, the difference between where the tip of the stylus is on the screen and where you're seeing that dot, that distance is thinner. And because it has tilt from USI version 1.1 and now in 2 also, that means that when you're using the stylus at an angle, it's going to work the way that you expect it to. Yep. That's so correct. that's a really a really big deal because tilt is really useful. I like as, as an artist, as something that if the protocol didn't include tilt, it'd be something that would probably uh, preclude it from uh, something that I would recommend, something that I would be interested in. But it has it. Definitely. And, and to your point, um, if you can imagine uh, taking that stylus, since we since it is a universal stylus and it'll work across any device, you can imagine taking that from one device to another device where it maybe has a thicker glass or a different stack up or, or different mm -hmm. touch technology. And you're absolutely, you know, without tilt, you would definitely see and we saw it in the past, a pretty large parallax error, which which is really annoying to people. Um, so yeah, the, the tilt really helps. <laughs> the tilt really helped. In fact, yeah, to mm -hmm. your point, I mean, that was the, the main reason I think a lot of the OEMs and other people wanted the tilt feature uh, because it helped them really solve that parallax problem. Yeah, so that part is is uh, really an exciting advancement. I uh, The part that I get giddy about is when you're talking about it being able to communicate back and forth with the computer because this essentially, the price point that Pete, you were telling me uh, last week was around twenty dollars for a stylus, mm -hmm. as opposed to one hundred and twenty. Yeah. yeah. So that's the that's the target. If you look at the Lenovo, which is a brand new stylus, the two dot just came out. I think they priced it around thirty five. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think um, you know our goal is definitely sub twenty. I, I don't, I'm not sure how many are selling for that right now. I think obviously initially. You know, people trying to recoup some of their initial investment. They're they were a little higher than we wanted, thirty five, forty dollars. Uh, right, but clearly, right. if if you look at what the the should cost is on that, they could still make really good margin at, at probably mm -hmm. sub twenty, and that's really our goal. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think the market kind of dictates a lot of that price because right. you price it too low, and people think it's junk. And yeah. So, <laughs> you know, to yeah. have to have that that ability to to sell it because people just skip the bottom run often until they know it's it's good. Yeah. So what you could do is you could have uh, a five pack <laughs> of stylus for uh, you know a hundred bucks or eighty dollars yeah. or something like that, and you could actually have them each programmed. One's a highlighter, one's yeah. your red pen, one's your blue pen, and you pick yeah. them up. One's a brush, and you pick it up and use it on your computer. And I think there's something really wonderful about the tactile, analog, just kind of old school feel to that type of thing that a lot of artists and different people they just prefer that it just yeah. it feels nice you're working at your desk you're working somewhere and you just grab a different one all right here you go yeah yeah in fact um i don't know if you remember the old big pens uh where they had the different buttons on them 
Uh, mm -hmm. We actually we actually had a stylist provider early on provide one. So so the other thing I did mention, in addition to the color, the style, uh, the width, etc., uh, you can actually program the buttons however you like them. So you can configure those the way you want them, and they can also communicate information. And so one of our stylist providers very early on did a very old school. It's like the old Vic Pen where you had four colors on it. It had four different yeah. buttons. Yeah, and when you click that button on the stylus, it communicated to the controller that's what color it wanted to be. So they did the standard colors from the Vic Pen. Uh, it was super cool. I think I still have one. Um, if you're at CES, I'd love to show it to you. But oh yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, but it's yeah. just an example of some of the the flexibility of the protocol is is really what I'm trying to highlight. And and I think I told you last time we even have things we call vendor extensions. So there's room within the protocol if people want to differentiate. So, so we wanted to standardize mm -hmm. on the basic features. So every stylus, no matter what device, what computer you take it to, it'll it'll have the same basic functions and it'll communicate, it'll ink very well. Um, but we also wanted to, like let's say Lenovo wanted to add some unique features to their stylus. Uh, they could do that. And then on the Lenovo device that understood that, um, we, we again call them vendor extensions, they could do all kinds of really cool proprietary stuff with that stylus on their screen just to differentiate themselves. So. So the protocol is extremely powerful. Um, you know, some of those applications are, are starting to come out, um, but mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's really really cool in terms of what we can do with the stylus. Yeah, when I when I first was contacted by um, Becca, actually, mm -hmm. um, she she was sharing with me about the USI stylus, and I, I actually um, thought it was less powerful, <laughs> less mm -hmm. feature rich than Microsoft's uh, Ntrig yeah. slash. MPP 2.0 or 2.5, yeah. uh, and uh, that's not the case. I was yeah. I was really pleasantly surprised at how powerful this is, and the idea of having a universal platform that everyone is using really does solve a number of different problems. Right. I know that there was some hesitation from Wacom and from some of the other kings in the industry. Wacom yeah. being the king, yeah. Um, I'm not sure who would be the princess, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. It's someone else. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but but them being a part of that means that, like, you look at an HP two and one, and an HP tablet, and an HP, uh, you know, two different two and ones, and all three of those devices could have a completely different pen. Yeah. And it's not clearly labeled. I've made a number of videos on YouTube talking about how how to tell. And yeah. the video was a, I don't know how to tell. Does anyone have an answer? <laughs> <laughs> Great yeah. content. That's, uh, that's what I sell. Yeah, I'm going to watch that one because, no, we heard the same thing. I mean, obviously, until, uh, you know, we did a lot of research uh, in this area, talking to retailers and other folks, and there was very clearly a lot of end user frustration trying to figure out what stylus worked with what platform. And and so, I mean, that's kind of the reason we decided to, to drive the standard and, and the fact that we had so many companies, including all the tier one OEMs, because they were hearing it from their, you know, their customers. Um, that we really just needed to have one stylus. I mean, fundamentally, if you think about it, I, th I don't think a user cares how the stylus talks to the screen. No, they care about the features. They care about how well it writes. They care about the performance. And exactly. And 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 so we're like, you know, the protocol should be just yeah, no brainer. They should just work together and talk together. And that that's what we set out to do. And happy mm -hmm. to say we're we're making very good progress. I mean, we have Chrome. You'll see Android products coming out very soon. Because uh, our vision was pretty much every device that you would write on uh, could communicate uh, via USI. Um, you know, Windows we're still working on. Obviously, they have their own protocol. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they don't consider USI one of the accepted protocols, which is which is fine. It'll still work because we use HID, which is also an industry standard. So right, the yeah, H yeah. HID interface driven through USB.org. Uh, that's what we use to communicate, and that's the beauty of it because it is a standard. So. Anything that yeah. talks HID, uh, like Windows and Chrome, uh, will work just fine with USI. So, so uh, as as an artist, one of the things that I I was really excited about is that this protocol is very very similar to Wacom AES, which yes. is the best um, quality uh, line that can be created right yeah. now. Uh, very very similar to Apple's uh, protocol that they use. It's very, very clean. It's yeah. a really nice looking low jitter line. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So getting devices all compatible with the same standard would be a, a dream for a lot of artists. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you know, Wacom's the king. They, they, they were a founding member and they are members of USI. 
uh, their new protocol is is very similar to USI, but but they're they're a great example of exactly what we wanted. So for education, you could have some of these you know low cost ODMs developing styluses that mm -hmm. they ink, they do okay. They certainly wouldn't be acceptable for an artist, but then you could have someone like a Wacom who is just excellent at producing you know very good performance on their stylus and and they can produce a little higher end one with more features um, that would be you know suitable yeah. for an artist and and that's the beauty of, of the standard and, and the way we developed it is it, it covers top to bottom you can everything like i said low cost no buttons mm -hmm. just no real features all the way to extremely high end with all kinds of advanced capability all within the same standard and that's really what we were striving for and yeah, Wacom is a great example, and, and they actually have a dual protocol stylus, so it actually speaks uh, both USI and AES, and and uh, you're going to see more of those as well. I think there's a couple that are, you know, USI and MPP, and, and you can do it on both sides. You can do it on the stylus side, which is great. You can also do it on the touch controller side, and we do have some touch controllers coming out that will be multi-protocol, and, and the beauty of that is that you can actually have an OEM that has the same hardware. Um, they could actually use the same hardware in Chrome and Windows, but basically it, it'll support, you know, MPP and USI or AES and USI, uh, whatever their preference is, but they can support both protocols on the same controller. And it's all invisible to the user, which is perfect. Right, yeah. Because again, the user doesn't care, they just want it to work. And we're right. ho our hope is that long-term people finally go, okay, this is silly. Why are we spending R&D dollars on developing a new protocol? Uh, let's mm -hmm. align on one protocol and spend all our money on features, on performance, on better user experience. I mean, that's right. really the goal. We re those are those are the things the users care about. That's where we want people to to invest and not invest mm -hmm. in competing protocols. And yeah, and just one one more bit of history. So before all, even the, the the kind of the big three or four that came out, you may or may not know that like a lot of the OEMs were all doing their own proprietary protocols. Uh, so mm -hmm. Huawei was doing their own protocol. I think some of the OEMs were developing their own protocol with their touch controller providers. So it used to be the Wild West. Where uh, back to your point about confusion on which stylus you needed it was it used to be way worse before we uh before we started the usi standard so at least now it's converging a bit uh, we'd love to see it converge even more and ultimately just you know have a single protocol so. yeah i think that would be ideal for so many different people because you're it's just like an api for programming it's like if you have to yeah. write every little bit by yourself everything's going to take so much longer there's going to be all these yep. bugs other people yep. can't work with it Yep. So this is a, a really intelligent move that you guys are doing, and I, I very, very much applaud you for it. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, we're, uh, we're excited about it. Yeah. So Pete and I are going to uh, talk a little bit behind the scenes, and I'll have some more stuff to share with you guys soon. So if you haven't yet, uh, click the like button on this video and subscribe so that you get more information on the USI protocol, what they're doing, what they're planning. I'll also be having a video coming out soon about the top drawing and note-taking apps for Chrome OS. Uh, you answered a lot of questions and shared a lot of things that make me really excited about the future of USI. Uh, hopefully, seeing some Windows uh, adoption, that would be wonderful and glad to hear that it will work on Windows. It just needs a little bit of uh, strings tied in the back. Yeah. Um, just thank you again for being on the show here with me. Well, thanks, Justice. Really appreciate the opportunity. And we're also excited about USI, definitely. So thanks again.